Hi, it's Luke. Talked about a pod caught in a box or an infinite well this time. Um, as you can see, here's an example of what a, po- a pod caught in a box was like. The potentials are infinitesimal or inf- or just infinite on each side at uh, length L and at length zero. Um, and yeah, the velocity in the box is zero as well. It's a particle, can't leave the box. Um, but outside the box, the wave function is equal to zero. Um, in the box, the Schrodinger equation is all of that again. What we saw the other day um, minus the kinetic energy component. Um, so, solutions for this Schrodinger equation are that the wave function can either be um, sine kx or a sine kx plus b sine k uh, cos x cos kx. Well, and a, b, and k are constants. Um, this is because with the particle in the box can have a sinusoidal or a, a cosinusoidal wave. Um, so let's consider the boundary conditions. Um, at x equals zero, the wave function is equal to zero as well. Um, the wave function has to be continuous. Don't forget. So the wave function equals zero for when x is less than zero and when x is greater than zero, which is the conditions outside the box. Whereas in the box, the wave function is continuous. So if we sub in x equals zero to this equation above here for the wave function, that we'll, we'll get a sine zero or zero equals a sine zero plus b cos zero. Uh, we know that sine zero equals zero and cos zero equals one. So we can say that zero equals b. And therefore, we can say that the, well, we can say that b equals zero, zero equals b, whatever. And therefore, we can say that the wave function is equal to a sine kx because the cos function is gone, essentially. Uh, if we look at the other end of the box, we've got x is equal to l. So we've got the wave function l has to equal zero as well, as we what we described earlier. Because the walls have infinite potential and it's essentially the same as being outside the box. Uh, so we can say that a sine kl, as we derived earlier, is equal to zero, which is also equal to the wave function l, the wave function of l. And a can't equal zero due to the normalization. Um, and sine kl therefore equals zero. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So you've got a sine curve. Um, so yeah, if if a equals zero, if a was equal to zero, then we wouldn't get any normalization, um, which is what we need for the particle to exist in the box, I believe. Anyway, for a sine curve, we know that at um, any integer of pi, we've got a zero value. Um, so we can say that the KL equals an integer of pi. And as I just mentioned, the intervalues of pi, sine of pi equals zero. But n can't equal zero due to sine a sine zero being zero everywhere, which is impossible. So that means the solutions can be this here, which is the wave function x, which is equal to a sine m pi x over l where n equals uh, 1, 2, 3, etc, any integer value. So if we take this Schrodinger equation, um, which is essentially what we had right at the start up here, just a little bit um, different. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Apologies. So we've worked out what the wave function is which is what we wanted to do up here so we could plug it in to this equation. So we can plug that in now. So we've got minus Planck's reduced constant squared over 2m multiplied by uh, the second derivative of this, which is what we just um, described up there. And that's equal to the energy operator times the wave function 2. So if we want to simplify, well, if we differentiate it once, we get this, we get a factor of n pi l out, so we've got a n pi l cos whatever. And if we differentiate in sign, we get cos. 
and then we can differentiate it again to get minus a sine because different uh, if you differentiate cos you get minus sine and we've got another factor of n pi over l out and that's equal to e um, um, and the wave function so the terms that we've got if we take our n pi n squared pi squared l squared out we get n squared pi squared Planck's reduced Planck's constant Planck's reduced constant squared over two m l squared um, times a sine um, n pi x over l equals e um, to the wave function, and we know that the wave function is equal to this part because we derived that earlier up here, and this is the energy part there. So if we take out n squared pi squared over l squared, we get that. Okay, so we've got e equals to that, and we know that the Planck's reduced constant squared is equal to normal Planck's constant over 2 pi, so we can sub that in and get e is equal to n squared over h times h squared over 8 m l squared, where n is equal to an integer number. And this energy is now quantized, which means it's allowed for all values of n. And the energy is proportional to n squared, as we know, because we've got an n squared term in the top here. The zero point energy can't equal zero, which means n can't equal zero, because the value needs to be finite in order for the wave function to be allowed, as we mentioned earlier. So if we go back to normalization again, for normalization, the multiplication of this um, wave function has to be uh, equal to 1. So if we have a look here, this is our wave function that we described earlier. And if we sub that in to this equation, we can take a factor of a squared out and get um, sine squared over 2 pi x over l uh, dx, and that needs to be equal to 1. Because essentially what we've done is we've multiplied, we've, we've squared that essentially straight off the bat. So that's why we've got a factor of a squared out. Um, and then using this correlation, knowing that 2 sine squared x um, is equal to 1 minus cos 2x, we can sub in, uh, we can sub this in to the equation. So if we sub it straight in, we'll have 2 minus cos, etc, etc. But if we take a factor of 2 out, uh, it goes down as a division, and that gets to... 1 minus cos, etc, etc. Then we need to integrate it. Um, and this is the integrated form. If you, if you integrate 1, you get x. If you integrate um, cos 2n pi x over l, you'll get this factor out, which is um, dividing by that power, essentially. Um, so yeah, if you divide 2n pi over l, like by by one, you'll get l over two m pi, and that's equal to one. Um, we've got a squared over two is then equal to if we plug in l, you get that l minus zero minus zero plus zero because when we sub zero in, we'll get zero at all. Um, then we've got a is equal to root two over l. That has to be positive. Otherwise, the negative version is out of the box, so that's wrong. And the probability is the square of the wave function. Um, yeah, so the probability is the square of the wave function, essentially, which is what we worked out almost. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for this lecture. Um, we've got some more examples coming up, but this video has been going on long enough, so I'm going to save it for the next one.